Internal resistance has to do with batteries, okay? If you have a battery and it says, let's just say it's a nine volt battery, okay? It doesn't look like that. Um, but what happens is this is basically what it's rated for. Now, it's not gonna provide actually nine volts, okay? What might happen, and this varies quite a bit, is you have what's called the open circuit voltage, okay? Uh, let me just use a one and a half volt battery. And it gets, again, it gets a little complicated because one and a half volt batteries don't provide just one and a half volts all the time of potential difference. So if you take your probe and you go between here and here, you'll read it. And let's just say it says 1.5 volts, okay? That's the open circuit voltage. Now let's hook it up to a circuit. And it's going to be a really, really easy circuit. And that's R. Okay, and let's say that R is 3 ohms. Now, if we said this is 1.5 volts, and that 1.5 volts is across 3 ohms, we could use Ohm's law, V over R, and we'd see 1.5 divided by 3 is 0 0.5 amps. And if you saw that, you'd be, um, I'm sorry, if you solved for that and you actually checked it out, you'd be disappointed because it really will not provide exactly 0.5 amps. It'll provide somewhat less. And the reason is, this battery is not a perfect electromotive force, uh, not a perfect EMF, not a perfect provider of a voltage difference there, a potential difference. What really happens inside that battery is you can model it like this. It's a one and a half volt EMF. In other words, that is actually one and a half volts. And again, we're just gonna assume that, it, that the actual battery open circuit is one and a half. And then you have this internal resistance. And the internal resistance is really how hard it is for charge to move through the battery, the bulk of the battery, um, I guess including charge moving through that chemical reaction in the battery. I just lost, a, just lost a calculator. So when you have current flowing in this direction, there's actually gonna be a voltage drop across the internal resistance. So you'll end up with 1.5 minus some value, minus whatever the voltage drop is across the resistor. Let's solve and see what that looks like. Let's say, I'm gonna draw this bigger. Let's say again, one and a half volts. Hope that calculator's not broken because I'm about to, about to use it. So let's say the EMF is one and a half volts Oops, sorry. Like that, okay? So this is one and a half hot volts higher potential than this. And let's say that this resistor, let's make it easy, let's make it one ohm. Okay? And I just said three ohms over here. Well, this is a series resistance. So the current in this one is going to be I, current anywhere in the series is going to be the voltage, the potential difference here is 1.5, and that's 1.5 volts across both of those resistors in series, which is 4 ohms. So you end up with 0 0.375 amps. Okay? So we know now that the current you would find in this situa situation is 0 0.375 amps. But what happens if you actually then take a probe across your battery and see what that battery in the circuit is providing? We know open circuit, it's one and a half volts. We measured that earlier. But if I took my probes and went here, what would I find? Well, if 0 0.375 amps 
is going through that internal resistance, right? Because that current is flowing all the way around there, right? So if you have 0 0.375 amps going through there, I times R is going to be a voltage difference of 0 0.375 volts. 75 volts. Okay, so between this spot, the bottom of the battery there, and the top of the battery, between the negative end and the positive end, let's figure it out. That potential difference will be, well, we went up one and a half, and then we went down 0.375, and that ends up being 1.125. So the battery voltage, 1.125, volts. So if you take a probe and put them on the ends of that battery, you'll find that it measures 1.125 volts in this situation. Okay? This is going to be a big deal when it's large compared to this. If you're what we call load, if your load resistance is much bigger than the internal resistance, it won't affect what you think your battery is going to be putting out as far as putting out what uh, establishing as a potential difference. But as this is, if this is small compared to this, or if this is, you know, comparable to this, it's going to make a big difference. I mean, think of that 1.5 to 1.125. Boy, that would not be good if you were designing a circuit, assuming you're going to have a 1.5 volt difference between those two spots.